Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an issue that's um, uh, very important to me and to my state. Uh, BLM manages nearly 23 million acres of public lands in Utah. Now, 23 million acres in a, is an enormous amount of land. I live in a relatively big state, and um, uh, within my state that covers an astounding 42 percent of, of uh, the surface area of the state. Utahns depend on these lands uh, for their way of life, um, for farming, livestock grazing, mining, energy development, and also in many, many instances for recreation. It goes without saying that BLM's land management plans have very substantial and very lasting consequences for Utah's economy and for the well-being of individual families, uh, individual citizens within my state. That's why I'm troubled by the proposed planning uh, rules disregard for state and local involvement in the planning process. The Federal Land Policy and Management Act, or FLIPMA as it's commonly known, requires BLM to give state and local governments a prominent seat at the land use planning table to ensure that plans are in harmony with local needs and with local values, with local customs and uh, uh, things that the land is commonly used for. The, the proposed rule that we're discussing today, however, flouts, I believe, uh, BLM's legislative mandate by undermining coordination between BLM and local officials, uh, relaxing consistency standards, and watering down state and local input, and doing so in the uh, early planning stages. Furthermore, the proposed rule threatens to circumvent BLM's own field managers and state directors at later stages of the planning process through the introduction of so-called landscape-level planning, which transfers decision-making to a deciding official handpicked by the BLM director in Washington, D.C. Uh, in the case of my state, that's a couple thousand miles away uh, from where the affected people live and work and are trying to raise their families. Effective land management depends on collaboration and trust between the federal government and local officials at every step of the process. I therefore strongly urge BLM to carefully consider the public comments submitted by state and local leaders and to incorporate their recommendations into the final rule. But Mr. Cornsey, Utah's local leaders and I are especially concerned about the new planning assessment step in the proposed rule. As you're aware, last month, um, Utah's governor, uh, the, the office of Governor Gary Herbert, uh, sent you a letter expressing concern that the planning assessment does not meaningfully involve state and local governments, uh, e even though that is required by FLIPMA. The letter recommends, among other changes, two amendments to the planning assessment. The first would direct the BLM to, quote, identify state and local plans with which BLM plans must be consistent to the maximum extent consistent with FLIPMA and federal law, close quote. The second would require BLM to, quote, coordinate with state and local governments and Indian tribes to formulate BLM planning and management objectives in the planning area, close quote. Now, these are modest and I, I think very reasonable suggestions, very modest, reasonable um, uh, requests that would uh, more closely align the planning assessment with FLIPMA and with what FLIPMA already requires. Um, and I think would alleviate concerns justifiably shared by states and local governments across the West. So, uh, Mr. Coinsley, do, do, does, does the BLM plan to incorporate these recommendations into the final rule? So we are receiving a lot of really excellent comments right now from the state of Utah, from many states, uh, from counties, from other stakeholders uh, and other gov governments. We, are, we plan, I think we have a path to accepting a number of comments. I can't tell you specifically you know, where we are in terms of working through those two pieces, but you know, I will say in terms of the planning assessment and the role of state and county governments, if they are cooperating agencies, they are, they are sitting with us, right? So the point of a planning assessment is to bring in a whole mass of information and figure out what data and what information you're gonna build your plan upon, right? What are the, what are the core, what's the core information you're gonna use? You know who sits next to us? The state and the counties, if they want to. 
They have to opt, opt in to be a cooperating agency, but they sit with us and they help, help us work through that data that comes through the door. So I, I'm confident that that is going to be a, continue to be a close relationship. Now, uh, I, I'm out of time, but just, uh, just to clarify, is there, is there anything about the two recommendations I outlined, the two proposed changes that strikes you as um, unworkable uh, or is something that's likely to be rejected, or, or, or do these sound like sound recommendations to you, recommendations that presumably could be and perhaps should be incorporated into the final rule? You know, we are gonna, we're gonna take those seriously and see if there's something that we can incorporate there. Okay. There's, doesn't sound like there's anything that's categorically, uh, that would strike you as unreasonable about those recommendations. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Lee. 